I once asked my grandfather where he was when his peers were being allocated huge tracts of land, you know, across the Gusi region. And he told me that at that point, it didn't matter to him, you know, to own huge tracts of land because he couldn't imagine that at some point population will grow. He couldn't imagine that at some point land will be inadequate. That is the challenge we are also facing as far as the housing matter is concerned. It is for that reason, Honorable Speaker, that today, even as a member of parliament, my house sits in a 50 by 100 piece of land. And that is my area in Gusi area. Because of the carelessness and the don't care attitude my forefathers had as far as land allocation is concerned. Honorable Speaker, it is prerogative of every government to think and create structures that define the future of a country. I get surprised, Honorable Speaker, that we are seated here just talking about matters of today, talking about matters of now, not imagining what will befall this country as populations grow day in, day out in another 20, 30 years. When members of parliament rise on their seats, telling people that housing matter is not necessary, it is not a necessity, when we all know that it is important to have food, yes. It is important to have clothing, yes. But it's also important to have shelter. And that is what this government is talking about. And when you talk about importance of having food, this very finance bill has catered for that. And that is why we are talking about zero rating, taxation on the farm inputs. In another few days or so, food production will be low in terms, I mean, the cost of food, the cost of producing food will be low, food will be adequate, people will have a lot of energy, but they'll not have shelter. And that is what we are saying today, Honorable Speaker, that it is important for us to pass this finance bill as far as if there is nothing else that we need to be thinking about, then let's think about this housing thing. I imagine back in my area, and I keep saying this, that Gusi, Honorable Speaker, is turning to be a village slum. There is no land, but there are some pieces of land owned by government. And that is what you want to make use of. We are telling the members of the public that even as we think about today, in another 30 years or 20 or so, we'll need now to imagine the urbanization, because Kenya is largely urban in terms of, you know, in, in nature. Everyone, everyone is moving urban. But now we are telling the people this way, that through this finance bill, you will be able to have structures built by government in your own sub-counties. So that in the inadequacy of land, it does not really affect you. Your people will have shelter. Because of the zero rating in terms of the farm inputs, your people will have food. Then people, I mean, people will live very okay. And that is the essence of the finance bill. But Honorable Speaker, listening to my colleagues from the minority side, and I listened keenly to Honorable Tienda Amolo, when he raised issue in terms of, you know, cutting down the costs, the, the budget appropriation. But I get surprised, Honorable Speaker, we stayed here yesterday until 10 p.m. None of the member, not a single member of the minority was in this house to challenge the committee of supply when we were doing allocation. Except all watch. Except all watch. It is in this house that we allocate and reallocate funds. If you wanted to cut down the budget, if you wanted to downsize the surplus of a certain Osoro, particular... also be fair to Beatrice Elachi. She was here up to the end of time. I, I stand guided, Honorable Speaker. Yes. I was, of course, with Beatrice Elachi and Honorable Oluoch. But all the rest were not here. You, you are talking about cutting down the budget as, as far as appropriation is concerned. That is a prerogative of this House. You are not here, Honorable Tienda Molo. Who else do you want to cut down that budget if you are not here? You are complaining that we are, you know, collecting money left, right, and center. But we, we passed that budget here. We passed the surplus here. It is a shame. It is a complete shame, Honorable Speaker. And it is important for Kenyans to know that the budget is pushed through your taxes. And that is what the essence of this finance bill is all about. The budget... Give him one minute. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. It is through this finance bill that we're able to display where collection of money, collection of revenue is going to come from. 
When we passed the budget yesterday, we are justifying our collection, our source of income, through this finance bill. So even as you challenge the finance bill, ask yourself, what element of the committee of supply did you challenge yesterday in the committee of supply? None. You are telling us to borrow. How do we borrow? To what extent can this country borrow? Do you want us to go to the Ghana, to Ghana way? How do you say that you are defending the content creators? But we've displayed to you, we've been able to reduce their taxation from 15%, you know, to less than 10%. I mean, really, why do you want to play populist politics when you know you also need salaries? You know very well that your classes need to be built. Your road needs to be done. You are here shouting about CDF. Where do you want money to... The Honorable... Dr. Jackson Kosgei.